Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Do you have a favorite toy? What is it? Why is it your favorite toy? Today we will learn about a woman who gave away one of her most precious items. But first, I want you to think of five things that belong to you that you would be happy to give away and five things that you would not want to give away. Okay, pause the video and get thinking. Was it hard to think of things to give away? What about things to keep? Sometimes it's hard for us to be willing to give away certain items. Maybe someone we love gave us a gift and it means a lot to us. Other times we can easily give away our possessions. God may sometimes call us to give away certain items, but if we do so to worship God, we can trust that he will use it for his kingdom. Today we will learn about a woman who gave away her most expensive oil to Jesus as an act of worship. We have a new big picture question that we get to learn this week. Our question is, how is Jesus the perfect priest? Our answer is, Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for sin, and he speaks to God the Father for us today. Let's say our answer slowly, one part at a time, as you repeat after me. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for sin. Your turn. And he speaks to God the Father for us today. Your turn. Do you know what a priest is or does? A priest was in charge of sacrifices and offerings at worship places. They also asked, acted as a go-between for the people and God. This reminded God's people that their sin required a sacrifice for them to be able to have a relationship with God. In the Old Testament, many people acted as priests. However, only Jesus is the perfect priest. All right, now it's time to watch our Bible story. The time was coming to celebrate the Passover. Every year, the Jewish people gathered together to remember a special event that happened long ago. When God's people were slaves in Egypt, God did great things to rescue his people. Pharaoh saw God's power and authority and he let God's people go. God had used Moses to lead his people out of Egypt to the promised land. God did not want the people to forget that time, so every year the Jews had a feast. Many Jews traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate. Six days before the Passover feast began, Jesus went to the town of Bethany. Bethany was near Jerusalem, and Jesus' friend Lazarus lived there with his sisters, Mary and Martha. Jesus and his disciples went into Simon's house for a meal. Jesus was reclining at the table when Lazarus' sister, Mary, came to him. She had a jar of very expensive oil. The oil smelled good, like a perfume. Mary broke open the jar and poured the oil on Jesus' head and feet. Some of Jesus' disciples were very upset. They thought Mary had wasted the expensive oil by pouring it on Jesus. The oil was worth 300 denarii, about a year's pay. One of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was about to betray him, said, She could have sold the oil for a lot of money and then she could have given the money to the poor. Judas did not say this because he cared about the poor. He said it because he loved money. In fact, he was a thief. They told Mary that she had done the wrong thing, but Jesus spoke up. Leave her alone, he said. She has done a very good thing for me. Then Jesus explained, You will always have people around you who are poor, but you will not always have me. Mary has poured oil on my body to get it ready for burial. Jesus said that wherever the gospel was told in the whole world, people would also hear about Mary and what she had done. Pouring the expensive oil on Jesus was not a waste, it was worship. By allowing Mary to anoint him, Jesus showed that he is more valuable than anything. Jesus knew he would soon die, be buried, and rise from the dead on the third day to rescue sinners. In our story, the celebration of Passover was about to begin. The Jewish people were getting ready to celebrate God's faithfulness and remember how he saved them from slavery in Egypt. It was a time to think about the sacrifice of the lamb's blood on the doorpost. As the Jewish people got ready for Passover, Jesus was with his followers. 
what sacrifice did Mary make for Jesus? Yes, she sacrificed her expensive oil by pouring it on Jesus. Her sacrifice was not a sacrifice to cover her sins. Instead, it was a sacrifice of worship. She had a heart of thankfulness toward Jesus and showed that he was her greatest treasure. How did the disciples react to Mary's offering? They were upset. They thought she wasted the oil. What did Jesus say about Mary's offering? He said that Mary had done a very good thing for him and that it was preparing him for burial. Just as the Passover lamb's blood saved the people of Israel, Jesus was going to shed his blood on the cross to save people from sin. Mary's oil was used to honor his body before his death. Jesus recognized Mary's sacrifice and said she would always be remembered for the gift that she gave him. This reminds us that anything we sacrifice or give to Jesus is never wasted. Anything we give to Jesus, we receive more in return because Jesus gave us himself. When we give our lives to him, we receive the gift of eternal life. All right, now let's watch Questions from Kids. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for Questions from Kids. Rodrigo from New York, New York asks, I don't have anything expensive to give to God. Do I have to give him things? That is a really good question. Well, in today's Bible story, we see that Mary broke a really expensive jar of oil for Jesus Christ. And we also see in Luke 21 that a widow gave two tiny coins to Jesus Christ. Each one of these women made a sacrifice. And Christ also requires for us to make a sacrifice. So do you have to give him things? Absolutely yes. You can give what you can. Now, you do have something really, really valuable, and that is your heart and your mind. What he desires more than your stuff is your heart. He wants your whole heart, soul, and mind to have its deepest affection towards him. Now listen, God already has everything. So anything we give him is to show him how much we love him and how much we trust him and how much we put our faith in him. Micah 6, 8 tells us this. It says that God requires for us to act justly, to love faithfulness, and to walk humbly with God. In doing this, we are actually worshiping God. What are some other ways you can worship God? I would love to hear from you. If you have a question, email me at gospelproject.kids at lifeway.com. And next time, I might be answering a question from you. What if we don't have anything expensive to give God? Do we have to give him things? What are some ways that you can worship God? All right, let's look up our new key passage. It's Hebrews 4.15. Go get your Bibles. Okay, we start in our table of contents, and Hebrews is in the New Testament. So we're going to go over here. And go down, and it shows it right there. And we go across, follow those dots to see it is on page 1,338. So we're going to flip over to that page. And there's Hebrews right there. And we're going to look for chapter 4. So here's the big chapter number 1. So we're going to turn another page. And there's chapter 4 right there. And we need a verse 15. So we're going to look for the tiny number underneath that chapter. And there it is right there. And it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Our new key passage tells us even more about our perfect priest, Jesus. All right, would you pray with me? Dear God, we praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus. Thank you that Jesus came to be the perfect sacrifice for our sin. 
Help us worship you like Mary did. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week. Bye.